I decided to challenge myself and render a full head of curly hair. I've avoided this for a long time, but today I'm diving in and sharing what I learned along the way. We've all heard that the key to good hair rendering isn't about drawing every single hair on the character's head. Instead, it's about simplifying. So I start by blocking in the overall shape of the hairstyle, focusing on the volume and flow rather than each individual strand. To render any hairstyle, you first need to understand how each strand works. With curly hair, like in my case, a strand isn't just a single spiral. It's a group of hairs moving in the same direction with a common flow. Before jumping into rendering the whole hairstyle, I spent some time doing quick sketches of individual strands, and here is what I learned about the curly hair. To render the structure of a curly strand, think of it like a twisted ribbon that tapers at the end. You can add individual hairs later, once you've established the basic shape. I start from the hairline and follow the natural flow of the hair, using long, smooth strokes. At this stage, I'm not worrying about making each strand perfect, but rather focusing on the overall look of the hairstyle. To make this easier, break the hairstyle down into curl groups. This makes the process feel more manageable and organized. Since I usually skip line art, my next step is to jump right into modeling the lighting. I start by adding some cool light spots on the hair, then focus on the darkest areas where the least light hits. At this point, the sketch is more of a distraction, so I turn it off. Next, I highlight the brighter areas of the curls to mark where the light is strongest, creating a sense of cold overhead lighting. To keep the hairstyle unified and not get stuck on individual curls, I add a second light source from the side, this time with warm tones. I focus on which parts of hair catch the light. Choosing the right brush is key. I use a brush pen from Procreate's default set. Its separate ends are great for shaping curls. At this stage, it's important to pay attention to where the light falls and where the shadows are. I make sure to bring out the highlights where the light reflects and dip in the shadows to give the hair more volume. I often zoom out to check how the whole hairstyle looks. This is a good tip for anything you're drawing. I avoid rendering every single strand in detail. Instead, I focus on highlighting the lead parts on the curls, while the shadowed areas blend into the overall shape. Another tip is about color. Hair isn't just one flat color. It helps to add subtle variations in shades to create depth and richness. I start by adding color from the lighting, and later I can boost the vibrancy during the final stages. So, the base is done. Now let's get to the fun part. Detailed rendering. At this point, I switch to a smaller brush and focus more on the structure of the strands. This is where blending comes in, and it should be used wisely. Blend only where the hair clumps together, or result of focus. Keep sharper, more detailed areas where needed, especially where the light hits. The closer the hair is to the light, the stronger the contrast between light and shadow. The further this, the softer that contrast becomes. This is especially clear with curly hair, since it has more volume and depth compared to straight or wavy styles. The key is to maintain the overall balance between light and shadow to keep the hairstyle looking cohesive.
for detailing, you can also use the lasso tool, not just the brush. It's especially handy for refining the hairline, shaping shadows, and controlling highlights and glare in areas with the most light. For the longest time I avoided drawing curly hair. I used to think better to do a good job on straight hair than a bad one on curly. But honestly, it's not that hard. It just takes a little more time than straight hair. If you can master drawing a full head of curls, you'll find any other hairstyle much easier. The key is knowing the basic principles and sticking to them. Hope you enjoyed my process and the final result. Feel free to share your tips in the comments and happy painting!